Hello, I'm Bill Beekman, the Vice President, Director of Intercollegiate Athletics at Michigan State University. Uh, welcome to MSU Today. On today's program, I'm joined by David Thornton, the Director of Michigan State University's Spartan Marching Band. And we're excited to bring you some behind the scenes uh, information, maybe some perspective on the band that you hadn't heard before, and uh, and what's going on at Michigan State University. So, uh, so David, uh, welcome to the program. Thanks, Bill. It's a real treat to be with you. So, yeah, the band, I've been uh, going to MSU football games, just as one example, since I was, gal, probably six or seven years old. And, uh, and to me, every, every football season, when the band comes out of the tunnel and they do the kick step and they come out in the same sort of way every single year, and then everybody sort of shifts to the center and they, they, they play that introduction, it just sends a shiver down my spine. It, to me, that's uh, that's sort of the first moment uh, to me that you feel like the season's begun and uh, and and we're really at a football game when uh, when the band comes out and and starts uh, you know starts their their pregame that traditional music. Uh, so you know, I know that the, the band is is very uh, you know is is just sort of a, a much larger part of. Of, of our culture here on campus than 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 many of us may maybe even realize and uh yeah I know in in various offices I've had on campus you kind of know that the summer is coming to an end when you can hear the band start to practice but uh D David there are, there are some things about the band that that maybe our our listeners aren't aren't as aware of and and one of those is that the the band the the marching band is actually a four credit class that our students take. So could you tell us a little bit about the structure of the band and practice and how, you know, how it all comes to be that we, we get those uh, young people marching out of that tunnel every September? Sure. Well, uh, that's, a, that's a, a big question and there's a lot of components to it. Uh, you know, the, the preparation of the marching band, it's really a year round project uh, for us. And, um, you know, uh, in a in a season, we report to campus. Um, you know, ten days before school starts, but backing up even before that, we do all of our auditions. Um, you know, between May and June, July of the of the summertime, and we we get our get our group together. We've got about three hundred and ten students that are in the band, and uh, we're unique, uh, as you alluded to, is because yes, we're we're a part of the athletic department and supported by the athletic department. But we also are uh, an academic class that students sign up to, to, to and get credit for. And so we, we kind of live in both of those worlds. And uh, so we, we come together for 10 days before school starts. Uh, we, we generally show up on a Monday. And the following Wednesday is the first day of classes. And then uh, two days later, we're in Spartan Stadium for our home opener. So in about 14 days, uh, students that are coming to campus for the first time learn how to stand up the right way and hold the horn and learn all the music that we ask them to memorize and, and practice. And we go from about eight in the morning till 11 PM at night uh, for, for those seven or eight days. And then we get ready for the home opener. So it's a really dramatic two week uh, transformation for our new members. And so, you know, generally uh, speaking, we have anywhere between 70 and 100, uh, we call them freshmen, although not everybody who's in the band as a first year member is a freshman. Sometimes we'll have seniors who are university uh, in the stand, university uh, seniors, they'll, they'll join the band uh, in their last year because they just, they either waited a couple of years or it took them a couple of years to successfully audition. And so, uh, this year coming up, we've got about 90 uh, new members in the ensemble. And so, uh, you know, in a, in a given year, uh, we, we take 60 trumpets. And so one of the things that makes our uh, band unique is that once you audition into the group, you have a spot in the band until, until you graduate, where a lot of universities, uh, college university marching bands will require all the students to re-audition every year. So in a, in a, in a given year, we take 60 trumpet players, and if we have 14 graduations or 14 folks that are not going to be coming returning back to the ensemble, 
Uh, then the next year we have 14 trumpet spots open. And if we have 40 trumpet players, you can do the math on the percentages of who gets in and, and how that works. So generally speaking, we've got roughly 200 people that audition for anywhere between 70 and, you know, 70 and a hundred spots. So somewhere between a, a 50, 50, 60% uh, chance of, of making the ensemble. So that all takes place in the summer. And then, um, and then we, like I said, we come to come to campus 10 days before school. We have our first game and, and we rehearse every day from four 30 to six on our turf field right next to Mon Arena. And our rehearsals are all open to the public. So anybody, um, that, uh, that uh, is on campus or welcome to come watch us practice. Um, and so we, we're out there every day, rain, uh, sleet, snow, <laughs> all, all the weather out there. We're, we're out there um, making it work. And so uh, we, we go, you know, as long as the football season goes, which has been uh, really successful for us. And we've really enjoyed uh, traveling to the postseason games and, um, you know, the makeup of our ensemble, I'll just break it down a little bit. And for those who, who maybe don't know, uh, we have, uh, we're an all brass ensemble with saxophones. So that means uh, saxophones, uh, alto and tenor saxophone. We have trumpets, mellophones, trombones, baritones, tubas. Uh, we have a full drum line. So snare drum, uh, tenor drum, cymbals, and bass drums. And then we have um, our Big Ten flag section, which is the uh, ceremonial parade uh, section that leads us uh, down the street when we march over the bridge to the tunnel. Uh, and they carry uh, a flag representing each one of the universities in the Big Ten. And then we also have our color guard, uh, which is the group that you see with the flags at halftime. And of course, we have our, our feature twirlers. Uh, this year, we have three feature twirlers. Um, and so we're looking forward to uh, having, having them with us uh, this year. So that's a little bit about who we are and what our makeup is. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're excited about another year uh, coming up here soon. So David, you mentioned that uh, the audition process and that you have a certain number of, of trumpets and presumably a certain number of, of every other kind of instrument that you've, you've got that, that makes up the band. And so you've sort of got a, a, a model composition that you, that you uh, want to work with every year. Are there are there some instruments that are uh, more popular than than others amongst high school students, such that you've got more competition? And are, are there other instrument instruments that that maybe it's uh, it's a little less competitive because they're not as common or or harder to play or something like that? Yeah, I, I think it depends on year to year. So um, every year the the drum line is very competitive. Um, the trumpet section is very competitive. Alto saxophones uh, is, are fairly competitive because generally we have the most amount of uh, folks who are auditioning on that instrument. Um, or uh, as in the case for this past summer, uh, we had a really high number of tuba players that auditioned, same with trombone. And so based on the number of individuals that audition for the band versus the number of spots that are available. So um, we take every year, uh, or well, when you see the band at halftime, uh, let's just say, uh, when you see the band perform at halftime, we have 32 altos on the field, 16 tenors, 56 trumpets. Uh, 24 mellophones, 32 trombones, uh, 16 baritones, and uh, 24 tubas. The drum line's roughly between 30, 35, and we have 36 color guard members. So we take a few more students in each section, um, and we kind of rotate individuals around. And um, so we have to, we carry a little bit more, but that's a, a typical performance block for us. Um, and so that's roughly about 250 people. So, um, yeah, the numbers, the numbers are a little bit different every year and it it just kind of depends. Um, like our trumpet numbers are generally, uh, we have a lot that generally audition, but given the uniqueness of the pandemic and just kind of where we are in 2019, uh, or 2020, I guess it is, um, the, uh, the numbers were, were a little bit different than normal this year. One of the things I always find interesting is the, um, the selections and, and how, how you choose. Uh, music for the you know, say for example for the halftime show and uh and how you take you know, i mean the band has played everything from classical music to rock music to country music and sort of across all different genres of music and and it seems to me that it would be challenging to take a uh 
oh, a, a rock music song, for example, uh, you know, something by the Rolling Stones or, or what have you, and translate that into uh, music that's played by by this massive band of uh, of people with different instruments and uh, instruments that were in no way contemplated when when the the music was originally written. How does that process work? Great question. Um, it starts uh, with a note on my phone where I'm constantly brainstorming and thinking about what are songs that would be fun or what are themes or what are artists that are maybe having an anniversary or are really popular in pop culture or we have a significant anniversary or an event coming up on campus. So there could be a, a myriad of things that kind of drive the schedule for that, so to speak. But it, it, it starts with always kind of being open-minded and always kind of brainstorming. And if an idea comes up, I've got a note on my phone that I just put it, you know, put it on there and I review it uh, later uh, just to come back to it. So when the season ends, uh, you, you know, late December, early January, we, 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 um, we put marching band away for about six weeks, seven weeks. And then we start thinking about uh, the design aspect of our show and, and based on how many shows we're going to do. So uh, we do a new uh, halftime show for every home game. So depending on the schedule, that could be anywhere six, seven, eight games. And so from there, then we look at things like homecoming and are there any other events? Um, you know, we've got a game coming up on Halloween, so that might dictate the, the type of um, show that we would do. And so there's a lot of brainstorming time and thinking about, um, you know, what we're, what we're looking at. Uh, we've got a new football coach this year. So I've met with coach Tucker to talk about some of his musical interests to see if we could collaborate on a show, uh, to welcome him to our MSU family. And so all of those things are, are influencers in that process. But another big part of it for us is the collaboration with our students. Um, they're very in touch with, um, with, uh, what's going on and what's popular with, uh, with their peers. And so we're very in tune to that. Um, and then some, some more technical details are some, some songs are, are translate well out onto the field for a musical arrangement, um, the tempo or how fast the beat is. Those things can dictate uh, the type of music that we play. And um, one of the things that we're always aware of, or try to be aware of, I should say, is, is the, the variety of music. And so as you, you know, articulated, we do try and, and, and appeal to a wide variety of audiences, not just from show to show or, or home game to home game, but also within the show. Um, so one of the, the shows that we've uh, got in the works for the fall um, is a, uh, a British band show. And so... Uh, Elton John has just had a really big anniversary um, with one of his um, big albums from 50 years ago. And so, you know, then you go down the rabbit hole of the Elton John only show or what about all of the popular British bands that have have resonated with various communities over the last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. And so then you, you get your web built and then you figure out, okay, what's a good blend? What tunes go well together? Maybe you focus on a couple different types of bands, uh, different styles to try and appeal to a wide variety of, of audience members that are in Spartan Stadium. And then the other part of this is, is the music permissions part, which can be uh, a little bit technical, but we work with a company to get the permissions to arrange the tunes. Um, so that we are within copyright law and all those other things. So it's a pretty delicate, intricate process. Um, but the music is the, uh, is, the, is the most important element because that's what drives all the visual things that you can see on the field and how all the maneuvers and the movements come together. And um, so the music is the most critical element for us in, in, in putting together a halftime show and the one that certainly takes a lot of thought and a lot of time to come together. But it's very much a collaborative process with myself uh, our staff members and our students. Um, and every year the students at the end of the year, we take a little survey and the whole band, you know, recommends themes and, and, and music that they would, they would like to do. And we try and involve some of those ideas into our, our, our planning and our performances to give the students a little bit of ownership, um, in the, in the process. So is there a, uh, it, it, over, over the years, is, is there a favorite halftime show that, uh, 
that you have? Wow. Well, uh, it's hard to believe that I am starting my ninth year here at MSU uh, between being a graduate assistant and being involved on the faculty in the College of Music. Um, you know, I my first pregame show was is, as the director three years ago. I'll never forget that moment and talking about state fanfare and the coming out of the tunnel. You know, that that's a moment that I will remember forever. Um, halftime show, you know, a couple years ago, we did a, um, a circus show. Uh, the Greatest Showman was a real popular summer movie prior to that year. I guess it was 2018. And so we did um, a circus theme show where we bookended our halftime show with um, – with uh, the greatest showman. And then we had a little swing chart. Uh, when I see an elephant fly from Dumbo and we made a giant Dumbo on the field in which the elephant, you know, the ears flapped and we made the elephant fly through the sky. And we did a, a, a did a medley of um, some Cirque du Soleil tunes. So that one, I, that one I was pretty proud of. Um, and then we also did um, the Africa theme show for the year of global Africa in partnership with uh, the African studies program. That was my first year. So three years ago. And um, the show was excellent. We had so many awesome collaborations with uh, the, the African studies department. And we worked with uh, one of the dance instructors from a, a university in Ghana, which was excellent. We had uh, authentic drumming as a part of the halftime show. And as it, as it goes, when you plan a, a, a mega halftime show with uh, all these distinguished guests. We had that was the that was the game with the five hour rain delay against Penn State, and then we had to push the show back another year or another week, I should say. And we ended up doing the Global Africa show in a snowstorm. A little bit of irony there, um, you know. But we, uh, we 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 made we made it made do with uh, the the less than ideal circumstances. But those are two that uh, particularly stick out to me. Yeah, I remember the uh, I remember the the Global Africa show and and spending some time with some of our distinguished guests from Africa up in the uh, the president's box, and then we went into that miserable rain delay. And uh, by the end of that game, I think everybody had left, and uh, my family and I were up there with uh, President Simon, and we were the only people left watching the end of the game. And uh, but but the uh, the the show the next week was spectacular and, and remains. Uh, one of my favorite band shows, just because of all the uh, all the things that that we were able to do, it was really really quite special. Well, it was it was, and I uh, just to learn about different musics and different communities, and to connect with different people, and which I think is a great message for the time that we're living in about being open minded and being listen good listeners, and and these cross cross collaborations are incredibly powerful. And our students, I think, really enjoyed the opportunity as well. Um, and so uh, it was a great experience despite the sideways snowstorm uh, two weeks later. So so that's a little bit about, uh, about some recent history of the band. But uh, I was excited last year to have the opportunity to speak to the alumni when they were back uh, to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the band. And, and that when we think about... Michigan State, having been founded in, in 1855, the band really has been with us for the vast majority of our history as an institution. And uh, uh, so can you maybe give us a little bit of a history lesson in terms of how the band started and, and a little bit about how it got to where it's at? Sure. Well, you know, we the marching band is a, is a big part of the band uh, program, but the, our, our band program as a whole um, is really significant, particularly, um, you know, in the Big Ten and, and really across the country. So um, the first band was was established in 1870, and it was a 10-person um, student civil war group. Um, and that was how our organization was started and uh, has grown now to an over 300 um person a member ensemble and so back in the day um when you were in the band you were in the band that played at all of the events on campus so if you fast forward to today uh within the college of music we've got uh three three bands um that are uh, audition based we also have jazz bands and we also have jazz octets and we have 
Um, we have our, our campus band, which is uh, any for any students that are in on campus that are interested in playing in a band. And so, and then you have the marching band, and then you have Spartan Brass, and so all of these different components um, are part of the the whole band program that is now 150 years old. But uh, you know, 75 years ago, if you were in the band, you were in the band that did everything. You were in the band that played the concert groups or played at graduation or played at a football game or at a basketball game. And so, um, it's, it's evolved, um, considerably over time. And so, um, you know, uh, one of our, one of our most, um, famous directors is of course, Leonard Falcone, who was the director of bands from 1927 to, uh, 1967. Uh, he's also, you know, world famous for being uh, a, a baritone soloist. Um, but he was he was a really big um, person in, in helping establish our our presence. Um, and, and maybe another name that that a lot of people perhaps know is uh, Bill Moffat or William Moffat, who um, established the uh, the patterns in motion patterns in motion marching style that um, everybody sees uh, in our pregame show. The, the kaleidoscopic uh, kaleidoscopic uh, motions on the field and the four person squads um, we he made he was made famous for for that style that we still utilize today and so um, you know we've we've really had a, a cherished history history and uh, so this fall uh, as a part of our anniversary for the 150th uh, year of, of, of MSU bands, uh, we welcomed back over 900 alumni uh, that came to participate in a halftime show. I believe it was against Indiana. And we had over 1,200 people in combined alumni and, and Spartan marching band on the field, which was, which was uh, just uh, spectacular. I'm getting goosebumps uh, just thinking about it. And um, so that was, that was a fantastic reunion. And uh, we, we, we was, it was just so great to see um, people that had been in the band over 50, 60 years ago, and they still come back and, and want to be a part of the great tradition. And um, we had scheduled in April uh, to do a concert band um, anniversary uh, in April, which was unfortunately uh, canceled due to the, the pandemic. But um, Kevin Sedatal and Aris Golden and myself, um, we each conduct uh, one of the concert bands within um, the, the College of Music, and each group was was ready to commission a brand new piece. And we had a bunch of distinguished guests and conductors coming back to campus to be a part of this event. And so hopefully um, at some point we'll be able to, to give that big, uh, big concert and, and have our, have our former directors uh, back to be a part of that event. So, um, but uh, we're, we're really fortunate. We're, we're not the oldest band in the big 10, uh, but we're certainly one of the oldest um, and, uh, we we take great pride in carrying on that tradition, and we you know it's part of my job to have that tradition continue. So, well, David, we've talked a little bit about uh, about football and and the halftime shows and the the incredible uh, enthusiasm that the band generates on a football Saturday. But uh, for, some may not be aware that that portions of the band um, also are very active in, in many of our other sports. So we have a, a band that plays at, uh, at basketball games, both men and women. Uh, we have a, a band that plays at hockey and, uh, and from time to time at other sports as well. And, um, and you know, that, those, those groups just create a, uh, an incredible sense of, of energy and enthusiasm. And, uh, you know, and I think it's important to remember that these are, these are also young people that, uh, that have to go to class and study and uh, and and have uh, you know have activities other than the band as well and uh, and yet so many of them are are so incredibly committed to their craft and and so enjoy it that it really is uh, you know it really is a pleasure to, uh, to 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 hear them and and to 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 attend events where they're performing. I appreciate I appreciate that immensely. We have some of the best students um I believe on MSU's campus and uh my the best part of my job I I say is is to be able to work with um the students that are in our band program. So the group that you're speaking of is Spartan Brass and uh that's a completely separate group from the marching band. Spartan Brass is roughly 100 to 110 students. Uh, I'd say about 75% of those students are involved in Spartan Brass. Um, Spartan Brass is another class that they would register um, for and, and take um, in the spring semester. 
Uh, even though it's a spring semester class, we all know that basketball and hockey and volleyball, uh, those are the major sports that we participate in at the games. Uh, and that starts in late October. So you could have a student who is, uh, you know, an engineering major that's doing all of their engineering classes and classwork and, and labs. And then they have marching band every day from 4:30 to six. And then one night we have a men's basketball game that starts at seven. So band practice ends outside at six and we're walking over to the Breslin center for a seven o'clock tip, you know, and then game gets done nine 30, 10 o'clock. And then they're going home to, to do, you know, homework and other things that they have. And so um, they're incredibly committed. Um, they are incredibly passionate. And as I, as we like to talk about, I, you know, we're, we're at the center of so many great, great sports teams. We're really fortunate that all of our teams that we support are, are very successful. The coaches appreciate us. The student athletes appreciate us. And they put in a lot of time. So when we, when we make the master schedule for Spartan Brass, it's about 80 events between uh, end of October till the end of the basketball season, if hopefully that's in a Final Four appearance. So they're, they are incredibly busy. Um, and so while the, the full band of 110 is not at every single event, we do break up into two smaller groups um, to try and make lighten the load a little bit. But our goal is to be there and support uh, the teams and um, you know contribute to the MSU community in a positive way and to be, uh, to be great stewards of, of not only the band program and the College of Music, but the university. And our students take great pride in, in their professionalism and their musicianship. And they do such a great job of doing that. And it's and it's the best part of my job by far. As the band director, um, you, uh, you, know, you, you presumably uh, got your start on, on an instrument. So what, what, what's your, uh, what, what instrument do you play? I am a clarinetist. Which is I, huh. which is ironic uh, because we don't have any clarinets in the marching band, right? <laughs> as a as an all brass saxophone band, my wife and I chuckle about that regularly. That the irony is there, or all of my trumpet friends that are saying, "Don't you wish you now played trumpet?" <laughs> well, 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 David, that anticipated my last question, which was, if if there was an instrument that you don't play but could, what would it be? You realize now all of my students are going to be anticipating this answer and are going to hold it over my head uh, when they hear this podcast. Um, I always say uh, I would either play uh, French horn or uh, trombone. Those are the two that I would probably, between the two. My daughter, who's three, is uh, swears that she's going to be a trombone player. So I'll, I'll pick trombone just to decide with her right now. How about that? Very good. Well, there, there is a... There, there, there is, uh, there is always good cause to side with your daughter. Uh, as, as the father of a daughter, I have learned that. Uh, mine is twenty-one, yeah. and uh, yes, I've learned that over the years. Well, Dave, very good. It's been an absolute joy uh, welcoming you to our program, and uh, hopefully, our listeners have learned a few things about the band that maybe they were otherwise unaware, and will have a, a deeper appreciation for what our young people do when they come. Uh, uh, come running through the tunnel and uh, in that very uh, inspirational Spartan fanfare at the beginning of the season. And uh, I'm very excited to uh, to have you on the show and, and thank you very much for your time. Yeah, Bill, thanks so much for the invitation and I uh, appreciate all you do for us. And uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Go green. Go white. Thanks so much, David.